Here's a catapult we built in math class. See our STEM project designed by Steve Hunter. We use the lathe, the mill, brake, shear, build the trigger mechanism, the arm, turn the axle on the lathe, plastic uh, bushings, uh, the flat spot on the axle, use a metal mill to cut that flat spot. This is our catapult. It's been a block building it, really good project. Um, never cock it or load it unless you're ready to fire it and it's clear. And then what I'm going to do to fire it, my goal is to maximize shot distance. So I'm going to have a student out there. I'm going to measure how far it fires to. Ooh, good Lord, that went pretty far. So uh, it was a travel of 28 feet. And then the other thing I want to do too is measure the angle that it launches at. I'll use a protractor, hold my protractor up here and see that the angle that this is traveling is about 50 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to find that angle. It's 50 degrees. Okay, let's work on some of the math here. The equation we're going to use is range, a physics equation. Range is equal to velocity squared sine of 2 theta divided by gravity. We measured the distance at 28 feet at an angle of 50 degrees. Um, there's actually three unknowns here. The distance it travels, the angle it launches at, and the speed, the velocity that it travels at. If I have any of these two variables, I can find the third. Velocity would have been hard to figure out um, by calculating it. So the best way to find velocity is to use this equation. So I'm going to just plug in my knowns, 28 feet is equal to velocity squared sine of 2 theta. Theta is 50 degrees. All divided by, uh, we'll use 30 feet per second squared. We'll see here that our units are all going to cancel out to give us feet per second. So our first thing I'll do is multiply both sides by 30. So 30 times 28 is 840. 840 equals velocity squared sine of 100 degrees, 2 times 50. Then divide both sides by sine of 100. So 840 divided by 0.984, which is the sine of 100, uh, gives me 854. So 854 is equal to velocity squared. Again, solving for v, I take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 854, and I get a velocity of 29 feet per second. If I want to check this, I could just shoot the ball, do the best job I can timing it and the distance and see if it's pretty accurate to that, to see if I'm even in the ballpark. So I have a velocity of my ball. Um, I could convert that to miles per hour to you know get a feel for how fast that is. So my velocity is 29 feet per second. I take that, I want miles per hour. There are 5,280 feet in one mile. My feet cancel, that gives me miles per second. 60 seconds is one minute. Seconds cancel, and now I have miles per minute. Multiply my factors of one, so I never change the value, I'm just changing the units. Um, 60 minutes equals one hour. Minutes cancel. The only units I have in the numerator is miles. Only units in the denominator is hours. So I take that 29, multiply by 60, by 60 again. Then I'm going to divide that by 5280. I'm going to end up with about 20 miles per hour. It seems about right. So again, using this equation, range equals velocity squared sine of 2 theta divided by gravity. If I have any of the two variables, either distance or angle, I could find velocity. Or if I had velocity and angle, I could figure out distance. Of course, there's, there's a few exceptions, um, like friction and air resistance. But. So that's the math behind the catapult. Uh, be safe and enjoy your catapults.